We all know how Godzilla 2014 ends. The big G-Man is lured in to combat the male and female Mutos, proceeds to get tag-teamed, and was well on his way to defeat until human special forces managed to blow up the Muto nest. Distracting the monsters just enough for Godzilla to get the upper hand, eventually killing them both. But what if the nest was never destroyed? Due to the effects of the Muto's EMP abilities, Godzilla was without his most powerful weapon and severely weakened, and the agility of the male Muto combined with the brute force of the female had the G-Man overwhelmed. While I never doubt Godzilla in any of his battles, he does always manage to come out on top usually. The circumstances of the 2014 Muto battle were leading Godzilla to his untimely demise. This video will go into that what if scenario and see what would have happened to the MonsterVerse version of planet Earth and its inhabitants if the Mutos weren't distracted and continued on to defeat Godzilla. Seriously though guys, I know a lot of you get upset when Godzilla's death is ever brought up, but just allow this to kind of play out in your head. It's all just a theory. So stomp the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get to it. So how would the lore change if the nest was never blown up during the ending of Godzilla 2014? The way the battle was headed, Godzilla would have eventually been pummeled to death. It is a bizarre thought to comprehend, I know, but in his current state at that point in the timeline, he was much more weak than we last saw him, and the Mutos are a Gojira killing species in the lore, so there he would lie. The potential last of the Godzilla's gone. His body would have been used as a source of atomic energy to help incubate the nest in its last moments before the eggs began to hatch. And once the thousands of infant Mutos burst from their eggs, they would have an almost never-ending buffet of Gojira energy to feed off of until they were old enough to venture out into the world. The city of San Francisco would be utterly destroyed and abandoned, becoming the prime example of the devastation a Muto infestation could cause. With Godzilla gone, the Mutos were in full parental mode and had no reason to ever leave the nest. They wouldn't allow mankind to get close enough to do any damage and their EMP effect kept any air attacks from ever happening. What we don't know in the lore is if a nuclear bomb could kill a Muto. I would imagine it is possible, but the ethical nature of dropping atom bombs all up the west coast would slow the political leader's actions. And since the monsters in the real movie stole the bomb in the first place to fuel their nest, I would imagine that the blast may just give them even more energy if the force of the explosion didn't kill them outright. So instead of going that route, Mankind forfeits the city and begins to plan the next course of action against the Muto invasion. After some time, the young Mutos would leave the destroyed city to find territory of their own. And this is when the chaos would really take over. The young would have yet to have gotten super massive, so conventional weaponry would still work on them. The only issue was that thousands of these smaller, harder to find Mutos were going out in all directions. But when they were found, it was a hell of a show. Bombing runs and fire from aircraft were able to kill many of the young Mutos, but plenty yet still survived. All in all, mankind couldn't keep up with the Mutos on their own, and the two parent Mutos were still occupying San Francisco, still nesting and waiting to be able to have another batch of eggs. If mankind didn't do something, the entire continents of North and South America would have been taken over by the Mutos within the next decade, if they even had that long so a more unconventional weapon had to be called upon to kill the originators of the Muto Plague. Kong. Monarch had already begun building a presence on the legendary Skull Island, and much of the technology that was invented after the 2014 attack would still go into effect in this story, but it would happen even faster with the Muto apocalypse underway. Kong who was still much larger than he was in 1973, would be captured and contained the exact same way that they got him to relax in the final Godzilla vs. Kong scenario. Using the strange Titan calming concoction, Kong would be forced to become humanity's final weapon against the Mutos. What would happen next in this what-if scenario would play out a lot like how it happened in Godzilla vs. Kong, with the ape being ferried across the ocean, but instead of going all the way to Antarctica, Kong was sent straight towards San Francisco the Muto Nest. Kong would eventually make it to the coast of America, and then be set free. Kong would be led to San Francisco and the Muto Nest. The nature of the Titans would instantly put them up against each other in a massive three-way brawl. Kong, in shock at first, he's never seen other creatures quite like the Mutos before, would take the fight's first massive hits. But we know Kong is a clever beast. 
using the environment. He would leap from building to building much faster than Godzilla was moving during his fight with the Mutos, leaving the monsters to constantly chase the ape around. Kong would quickly learn how to evade the Mutos, and at one point he would use his wit to jump off the side of a building and directly on the flying male Muto. The beast would crash to the ground and Kong would have just the opening he needed to go in for the kill. Grabbing both of the Muto's wings, Kong rips them off the male Muto's body and uses the creature's own bones to stab it repeatedly until it stopped moving. The female Muto, now enraged, charges Kong and rams him directly into a building. Suddenly, a burst of light blinds the entire area surrounding the battlefield. It was Mothra! The Muto takeover and death of Godzilla had forced the monster to hatch from her egg and grow into her final form much earlier than the real timeline here. The female Muto was in awe of Mothra and was extremely distracted. She was no longer focusing her attention on Kong, and he knew now was the time to strike. In the midst of the rubble, Kong notices a massive section of a collapsed building's skeletal steel that was roughly shaped in a way similar to some of the giant trees he remembered from Skull Island. He grabs the metal from the rubble and runs up behind the female Muto, who was now distracted and attempting to fight Mothra. Kong then grabbed the monster's head from behind, and in a similar fashion as to how Godzilla actually killed her in the movie, he proceeds to jam the steel beam down the Muto's throat until it wouldn't go any further. The Muto makes some horrendous noises as the life leaves its body, and Kong was victorious. The battle is won, but the war is far from over. For the next year or so, mankind, with the help of Kong and Mothra, would slowly take out any juvenile Muto they could find. The Muto's numbers were drastically lowered, and the few dozen that managed to reach near adulthood would then do what they do and fight one another for what little bit of resources they could spare for themselves at this point. And just like in the actual lore of the Monsterverse, they would eventually kill each other until only one or two alphas were left. So at this point in the theory, out of the thousands of Mutos that hatched, only a handful were left still alive. And knowing that they had a giant ape along with the rest of mankind coming after them, they disappeared. Perhaps they would come out again to attack one day. But for now, it appeared like the apes, along with Mothra, had won. The remaining titans like Rodan and Ghidorah are never bothered. With the Muto threat, there was no need to awaken the titans to teach humanity a lesson. So they would continue to sleep. Kong, now considered a hero of Earth, would be taken back to Skull Island, and Mothra would mysteriously disappear to the public. But in our world, let's say she went and found a baby Gojira egg and vowed to protect it till it hatched one day. After years of Muto rampages, millions of lives lost and trillions of dollars worth of damage, the Americas were finally able to rebuild. The Mutos never managed to swim across the oceans and give any of the other continents any issues. But that didn't stop the rest of the world from putting all their efforts into making sure that next time a Titan attack came, they would all be ready. So there it is guys, it may not be what any of us would want with the big G-Men dying, but the potential of a baby Gojira taking his place is a fun concept. But I do want to hear what you guys think would happen next in this theory. If this video does well enough, I may just take some of your ideas and continue on. There's still a whole lot more that could happen with Godzilla not alive in the Monsterverse. We still have Ghidorah, the Muto Prime, and potentially a corrupt Mecha Godzilla to bring into the fray. And of course, don't forget the little baby Godzilla and Mothra. But on that note, guys, thank you for coming to Dangerville today. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already, and give us a like if you liked the video. And if you were upset that Godzilla died, I'm sorry. Really, guys, for real. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This has been Jacob, and I will see you in the next one.